what we're doing this morning has a lot to do with also what we talked about if you were with us on Mother's Day. Uh, we're basically talking along the same lines. Um, what we're trying to do is get people involved in our community. We talked on Mother's Day about there being a lot of children that were being raised by mothers who had more important things to do. And how we needed the mothers to step up and step into a child's life and, and to help and guide them and, and direct them. But well, the same way, we want to do the same thing with Father's Day. We're going to look at the need for men and fathers and grandfathers in the church to step up and step into life, to children's lives. We don't have their fathers. There's a need in our community, there's a need in our society today. Because there's many out there who don't have a father figure in their life. And when I started putting this together a few weeks ago, I pulled up a couple of websites and I wanted to look at some statistics. And I knew that the statistics were bad. But honestly, I didn't realize that they were this bad. And most of these come from the National Center of Father. An estimated 24.7 million children, 33% of the children in the United States, live absent their biological father. Of students in grades 1 through 12, 39%, or 17.7 million, live in homes absent their biological father. 57.6% of black children, 31.2% of Hispanic children, and 20.7% of white children live absent their biological father. According to 72.2% of the United States population, fatherlessness is the most significant family or social issue facing America today. So 72.2 of us believe this is a big problem. The proportion of children living with just one parent rose from 9.1% in 1960 to 20.7%. In, 19, in 2012. 71% of teenage pregnancies, 71% of high school dropouts are from fatherless homes. Those are bad statistics. Now these statistics that I'm about to read you are the opposite of that. Homes with fathers. And they come from the Fatherhood Project's website. Children who feel a closeness with their father are twice as likely to enter college or find suitable employment after high school. And they are 75% less likely to have a teen birth. They're 80% less likely to spend time in jail. They're half as likely to experience multiple depression symptoms. Children with actively involved fathers are 43% more likely to earn A's in school. They're 33% less likely to repeat a grade than those without engaged dads. Father involvement using appropriative parenting. Loving with clear boundaries and expectations leads to better emotional, academic, social, and behavioral outcomes for children. High school level, high levels of father involvement are correlated with higher levels 
of sociability, confidence, and self-control in children. Children with involved fathers are less likely to act out of school and engage in risky behavior in adolescence. Don't those mess stop and make you think? When we realize that there are so many in our society that don't have a father figure in their life. Because there's such a high amount of children in our country that's in these situations, we need fathers and grandfathers and even men in the church without children to step up and to step into a child's life. Because they need us. Here's some personal statistics as far as BB is concerned. 2015, there are 1,989 children living in BB. It's 27% of the total population of 7,315. Of those, there are 317 homes with children without father, or 29% of the homes in BB with children under the age of 18. The question is, what are we going to do to help those children without a father in their lives? How are we going to change their lives? Or are we? Fortunately, I was blessed to grow up with a father figure. I don't know <clears throat> my biological father, Matter of fact, it was just this past Christmas that I learned his name. But my grandfather stepped up and stepped in when my father was nowhere to be found. Along with my grandmother, they took me into their home when I was five months old. They raised me as their own. <coughs> but not every child is as lucky as I was. Not every child is as blessed as I was. There are many, many children that don't have grandparents that are in the situation that have the ability to step up and step in. I thank God for those that do, but there are many that don't. So what are we going to do about it? Well, this morning I want to take a look at that. Much like we did on Mother's Day, we're going to follow along the same path. We're going to start by looking at how we should begin by treating the men that are in our church. Well, in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 1, he gives us, Paul gives us a way to do this. He says, Do not rebuke an older man harshly, but extort him as if he was your father. Treat younger men as brothers. We're able, what we need to do is we need to treat those who are older, and I realize that uh, in a con small congregation like this, there are a lot that are older. But we need to treat them with respect. We need to listen to their knowledge and their wisdom. And if they're wrong about something, we need to correct them as if they were our own fathers, with love and respect. We're to treat the younger men as brothers, as equals in Christ. Much like Paul tells us to treat the younger women as children, or as sisters, and to protect them. We should do the same for the younger men in our congregation. The young men in our church and the young men in our society, they change challenges, they face challenges and pressures that we've never faced. And they need us to help guide them and help make help them to make good decisions in their lives. There's so much influence and pressure from the outside world. We need to give them some influence from the church. It doesn't matter whether they never come to church. Our ultimate goal is to lead them to Christ. Our ultimate goal is to help them make right decisions. The young men of the church are the future leaders of the church. And if we don't prepare them, if we don't teach them how to be leaders, what are we going to do when we're no longer here? So 
So we need to teach, treat them as brothers and teach them how to be leaders. How to be leaders in the home, how to be leaders in the church, how to be leaders in the community, how to be leaders in the workplace. It's our responsibility because they're not going to learn it anywhere else. Much like with the women, we, we must understand that Paul wrote this to Timothy as it pertains to his leadership, pastoring role in the church. We need to remember not to take that out of context. However, if we all treat the older men as fathers, the younger women as brothers, we're just going to go closer together as Christ's family. Now I know, and you know, that brothers don't always get along, do they? <laughs> but that's okay. We still need to show that love. So let's look this morning at some responsibilities of fathers. First, we're going to look at the responsibilities at home. Because fathers have certain responsibilities for their home. And it begins with the raising of their children. Fathers are to be leaders at home. It's hard for a father to be a leader if he's not there. But Proverbs 22, verse 6 says, Train a child in the way he should go. When he's old, he will not turn from it. Fathers are to raise their children in the way they should go. Well, that means that they're to teach their children to follow God and follow God's will. By training the child up in the way that he should go, fathers, like our mothers, they teach them to respect others. They teach them to respect authority. They teach them to obey authority. They teach them to listen to the elders. And they teach them to follow Christ in their life. With so many homes being without fathers, it's no wonder that our society is going in the direction it's going. Because these children haven't been taught this stuff at home. Many times when in a home without a father, the mother, they're working extra hours. Or many are working two jobs just to make ends meet. Leaving the children in the care of others. Fathers have such a positive impact on their children when they're present. Not only does the father help take care of financial needs, they also teach their children and train them how to live. That's why it's so important for both mothers and fathers to be active in their children's lives. There are things that a father can teach his children that nobody else can. It's so important for the men of the church to step into the roles where a father has. And this is why. A father figure can change a child's life. A father figure can, change, can take a child who's going in the wrong direction and guide them back on the right path. Discipline of children is an important part of the father's responsibility. As I said on Mother's Day, mothers are often left to discipline the children, and many fail to do so. The fathers are just as responsible, if not more, at administering proper discipline. So again, we turn to the book of Hebrews in chapter 12, verses 9 through 11. It says, Moreover, we all have human fathers who disciplined us and we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the Father of our spirits and live? Our fathers disciplined us for a little while as they thought best. But God disciplines, for our, disciplines us for our good, that we may share in His holiness. 
No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who've been trained by it. Now, the Hebrew writer compares God's discipline to that of our earthly fathers. We respected our earthly fathers for their discipline. We may not have at the time, but as we got older, we sure did. As we started facing the things that they were facing, we sure appreciated and respected them for their discipline. And God disciplines us too. When we experience difficult times, God will use those times to help our faith and our trust in Him grow. Now God doesn't cause our difficulties, but He allows them to happen to discipline us. Our earthly fathers disciplined us for our own good. To nurture and to guide and to direct us. Because of their discipline, we respected them. And because of their dis discipline, uh, unless we were hard-headed, we obeyed them. Some of us are a little more hard-headed than the others. And it takes a while to uh, get through to it. Because of God's discipline for us, we should also respect and obey Him as our Heavenly Father. Our earthly fathers are to be examples of our Heavenly Father. As earthly fathers, we are to follow God's example and discipline our children. Our earthly father disciplined us as they thought best. And they weren't always right in their discipline. For example, and many, many of you may be able to write, relate to this, but my dad had a, you were there and you didn't stop it. So you're punished too, attitude. So if something happened and I was there and I didn't put a stop to it, I got in just as much trouble as everybody else did. This especially happened when my cousins were visiting us for the summer. Now, was he always right? No, because believe it or not, sometimes I wasn't even around and knew what happened. But I was disciplined anyway. But Dad wasn't always right in his discipline. As a father, I admit, I'm not always right in my discipline. But as earthly fathers, we discipline the best we can, knowing that we can't always be right. However, we must remember that God always disciplines us right. His discipline is never wrong. And we should thank Him for it because it will help us to share in His holiness. Discipline, though not pleasant, will have a lasting positive effect. That's why it's so important for the men of the church to get involved in the lives of children in our community that don't have their fathers. Colossians chapter 3 verse 21 says, Fathers, do not embitter your children for they may become discouraged. And then Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4 says, Fathers, do not exacerbate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. These scriptures sound a lot alike. Sometimes fathers, while administering discipline, we don't do it in such a way that we encourage our children. A lot of times we do it in a way that discourages our children. We need to discipline them to teach them, but we need to do it in a way that they know that we love them. We cannot make them believe that they can never do anything right. Because they're always a failure. They're always going to fail. They're never going to amount to anything. I hear that so often in today's society. Children told they're never going to amount to anything. And a lot of times what happens with those children that are told that that's exactly what happens. 
they don't about the they give up. There's nobody there to guide them, direct them. And this can destroy a child. They can destroy their future. We cannot dis discipline them in a way that will make them feel like that. Yes, discipline is necessary. Yes, discipline is never fun. But we need to let our children know that we discipline them because we love them and we want what's best for them. Not just because they messed up. The next responsibility that a father has is as a husband. Now, most likely you're not going to be able to fill the role in that way for a fatherless child. But we can set an example for them in our relationships with our wives. Because children watch those who are active in their lives. They're watching, they're looking for someone to set an example for them. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 23 says, For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, and the body of which he is the Savior. We are to step up, and we are to lead in our homes. The husband is to be the spiritual leader of the home. We are to lead our wives. We are to lead our children in a way that Christ is leading us. We are to set the example for them by spending time reading God's Word, by spending time in prayer, by sharing the Gospel, by serving others, by loving others. We are to be the example of godly leadership in our homes. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Husbands are to sacrifice for their wives and their children. There will be examples of servant leadership in the home. Husbands are to be examples of love in the home. It's been proven that boys will grow up to treat their wives the way their fathers treated their mothers. And girls will marry men like their fathers. So do you see why it is so important for child, for children to see husbands love their wives? If they see their fathers always arguing with their mother, especially, and especially if they don't live together, that's how they're going to treat their spouse. However, if they get a positive example of marriage, even from a father figure in his wife, the more likely to follow that example. That's why it's so important for us to get involved in the lives of children who don't have their fathers. Because they can see how we live our lives and it will impact theirs forever. We can set good examples in our community by the way we live, the way we love our lives. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 31 says, for this reason, a man will leave his father and his mother, be united to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Now I need to explain why I included that scripture. Folks, we have too many young husbands and fathers that are still depending on their parents for everything. Instead of moving out and finding their own place to live and paying their own way, they continue to rely on their parents to provide, even for their own family. Basically, what this means is that when someone gets married, it's time to move out and support themselves and their family. There's so many in our society that aren't doing that. But we can help to guide them when we step up and we step into the lives of fatherless children. Many believe, well, mom always took care of me, so mom's always going to take care of me. And this is part of disciplining and training a child in the way they should go. Now, I know that mothers can teach their children to be independent. 
I know of many mothers that have done just that without fathers. However, fathers are the ones that should shoulder the responsibility of teaching their children, especially their sons, to be independent. Remember, boys will follow in their father's footsteps. When they grow up living with grandma and grandpa, and dad is hardly ever works. Dad hardly ever does anything. And that's exactly what they're going to do. Same thing for girls. They're going to marry a man like their father. If their father is lazy, their husband is going to be lazy too. Now there are exceptions. But most of the time, this is the way it's going to be. And we need to set positive examples for those that don't have them. We need to make the decision to step up and to step into a fatherless child's life. We need to be ready to set an example for them through our own relationship with our wives and our children. We need to be positive examples for the children in our community because we have responsibilities in our community. In Titus chapter 2, verse 2, it says, Teach the older men to be temperate, worthy of respect, self-control, and sound in faith and in love and in endurance. Paul told Timothy to teach the older men of the church to live lives that would be good examples for young men. They are to be temperate, meaning that they exercise good judgment. They're clear-minded. They are to be worthy of respect, meaning that they live lives of grace, goodness, purity. The older men are to be self-controlled, meaning that he's in charge of his life. He's living with his body, his mind, and his will full of godliness. The older men must have attitudes, thoughts, and behaviors that reflect God's word. God's word. They're going to have a solid faith. They follow correct doctrine. They maintain correct relationships. They live good lives. The older men are to live in sound love, seeking to better the welfare of others, even if it personally causes a loss. They're to live in sound endurance, meaning that they model steadfastness and godliness in their lives, no matter their circumstances. The older men of the church are set an example for the younger men. In Titus chapter 2, verse 6, Paul writes, Similar, Similarly, encourage the young men to be self-controlled. You turn on the news, you watch a lot of what's going on in our country, a lot of what's going on around the world. You see a lot of young men that don't have self-control. That's where we come in. The older men of the church are to teach the younger men to be self-controlled. Children today face issues, they face problems, they face pressures that we never faced. Therefore, we must teach them to control themselves. We must teach them that it's okay not to go with the crowd. We must teach them that if everyone is doing it, it's still okay to say no. We need to teach children that they're responsible for their actions and their decisions. And that every action and decision has a consequence. There's so many today that don't want to take responsibility because they weren't taught responsibility. They do something and it's somebody else's fault. So it's all made me do it. They must be taught that good actions and decisions result in positive consequences. But the opposite is true. Bad actions and bad decisions have negative consequences. And then we need to let them take the consequences. We don't need to bail them out every time they get in trouble. By teaching them to be self-controlled, we can help them to 
to make decisions that are going to keep them out of trouble. They're going to lead them to do good things in their lives. We must choose to mentor young people. We must choose to mentor children. Not just children in our church, but children in our community. You will never know the kind of impact that you can have on a child's life until you step into a child, a fatherless child's life. And you step in as their father for you. And you discipline them and you love them. You encourage them. You teach them. You guide them. You mentor them. Folks, that was, that's what we need to do. It's up to us. Because other people aren't going to do it. It's going to take the men in the church to step up and step in to those lives of these children that don't have a father. Many children right here in this community live in fatherless homes. There are many children in this community that live in homes where the father is present, but he's really not doing what he's supposed to be doing. He's not spiritually leading. He's not emotionally leading. Just because he's physically present doesn't mean he's present in doing and fulfilling his responsibility. Because of this terrible, terrible crisis in our society, like I said, it's going to have to be the men of the church to take the time to be willing to step up and step in. We need to step into the lives of these children and give them somebody to look up to. We need to offer them loving discipline, guiding them in the ways they should go, guiding them towards a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. We need to be actively involved in the lives Fatherless. We can turn our society around if we're willing to do these things. If we're willing to step up and step into a child's life that needs us. All it takes is a little bit of willingness. I know it sounds difficult. It may even sound impossible. But if you truly want to impact this community, if you truly want to impact this country, ask that God opens the necessary door. Ask that He'll guide you where He wants you to be. He will make what seems impossible, and He'll make it possible if we're willing to follow Him. If we're willing to step into a child's child life. Our Heavenly Father disciplines us because He loves us. He sent His Son to die for us because He loves us. We are to follow His examples of discipline and sacrificial love by stepping up, stepping in to the lives of children who need us. That's what it's all about today. I'm thankful for the fathers that are there. Thankful for the grandfathers that are there. Thankful for the aunts and the uncles and the cousins that are willing to step in and help and be a role model in their family. To take those that their parents aren't doing what they should be doing for. I'm thankful for them. There's many, many children out there that don't have those people. They don't have a grandfather that's willing to step up, or that's able to step up. They don't have an uncle or a cousin that's willing to step up. So fathers, grandfathers, men, it's time to step up. It's time to impact our children and our church and our community and our world. The 
this morning are you willing to step up? Christ went so far as to step up and die on the cross. Our Heavenly Father went so far as to give His Son for us. He stepped up and stepped into our lives and gave His life. All we're asking for is a little bit of time, a little bit of influence, a little bit of love. Are you willing to give it this morning?